the operating rules for the commercial uses of the UAS. They also need to fly under 400 feet above the ground level, or if they're flying um, at altitude that is higher, they need to stay 400 feet, feet off a structure to avoid the structure. Uh, you cannot fly from a moving vehicle unless you are in the sparsely populated area. And you must fly at or below 100 miles per hour. Uh, this is also important that you have to um, fly during the daylight hours or it is permissible to fly 30 minutes before official sunrise to 30 minutes um, after official sunset in local time, which is called uh, civil twilight hours, but you have to have the appropriate anti-collision lightning. And you always must yield right of way to a main aircraft. That is pretty obvious thing that men aircraft always have uh, the priority over the uh, UAS. So just get out of the way. Uh, the operator must keep must keep the UAS in sight, so in a visual light of sight, and it needs to be done by the remote control, uh, the remote pilot, or um, or by the visual observer. You cannot fly intentionally over people. These rules apply to the all commercial users, but there are some businesses that recognize that it will interfere with what they want to do with the UAS or with the data. So the FAA found a way uh, how to control and how to check the safety of those operations. Uh, so some of the rules that I mentioned before can be waived. So if you want to operate the UAS uh, outside of rules, you may apply for the certificate of waiver. You have here under the link uh, the explanation from the FAA website uh, how to obtain the uh, waivers, how to apply for a waiver, and what are the available sections of the Part 107. So the FAA will grant waivers uh, that can be performed safely but otherwise will not be allowed after part 107 concerning the rules that we talked about before. Uh, there are only some sections of the part 107 that can be waivable. So the operation from a moving, ve uh, moving vehicle, a daylight operation, visual line of sight aircraft operations, the visual observer, operation in certain airspace, yielding to the right way, operation of multiple small unmanned aircraft systems, because uh, the regular rule in part under seven is one pilot for one UAS. There is also um, a waiver for operation of the people and operating limitations for the men, um, men aircraft itself. Even the recreational users need to be aware that some of the private uh, owners, private property have special rules for operating drones uh, above their property. It, this is an example for uh, NC State uh, that has its own rules. Uh, for people to, that want to fly uh, in the airspace above them. Um, but it's also a good custom to always ask the owner of the property or just uh, to notify them that you're going to be flying uh, over their house or their fields. Even if the airspace above their property doesn't belong to them, it is always to, uh, better to have friends uh, in the owner than um, to expect problems. But it is illegal to conduct surveillance or, or photograph uh, persons in the area when the um, expectation of the privacy exists without the permission. And you can find more, um, more about that in the privacy policy that uh, the MAA published. Uh, this is also pretty obvious. You do not 
want to harass people. You do not want to uh, use the uh, the camera or the UAS in the places where uh, you would not go and see with your own eyes uh, what is expected to be private. Uh, and um, it also <laughs> uh, applies to the uh, pilot that should be proficient in uh, the operations. If you are fly under the influence of alcohol of, or drugs, um, this proficiency can be just disturbed and you uh, it is forbidden to uh, use any mechanical vehicle under the influence of the substances. Now we move to the commercial use of UAS. This is the second uh, kind of use that's uh, highly regulated now. And uh, <clears throat> it is uh, the commercial use of UAS. It, uh, it is a use in connection with a business and includes everything that will bring you compensation. So selling photos or videos taken from the UAS. Uh, or using the UAS to provide contract services, uh, monitoring industrial equipment or uh, inspecting the factory, uh, also to um, provide professional services like security or te telecommunications, even if you don't sell the data obtained by the UAS, but you are there, for example, to carry um, a uh, Wi-Fi uh, router on the UAS to provide the services. That's an example of the commercial use of the UAS. Also, also, if you are using the UAS to monitor the progress of work your company is performing, you're not paying yourself, you're just uh, conducting uh, some work for you, but it, because the company you own makes profit, this is also considered as the commercial use of the UAS. For the commercial use, the remote pilot has some more requirements. First, the pilot must be at least 16 years of age and must hold a remote pilot airman certificate uh, with a uh, small UAS rating or be under the direct supervision of someone holding a remote pilot airman certificate. So you need to have in possession when you are flying this kind of um, um, ID for your that you're certified to fly the drone or be in um, with someone that has one, uh, one of the certificates. How to obtain one? Uh, obtain the remote pilot uh, airman certificate. More information is under this link, directs you to the FAA webpage, when you can see what are the certification standards, the test instructions, and uh, quick links um, uh, for the uh, for all those who want to obtain the Part 107 certification. You also need to expect that you will be um, uh, you will be required to pass the TSA vetting, uh, and uh, you can watch here um, how the process of obtaining the remote pilot Arman certificate is explained in a short uh, two minutes uh, YouTube video um, when the president uh, um, when a person from the FAA uh, sh shortly explains everything. The certificate itself uh, consists of 60 questions. You have two hours to complete it, and there is a 70% uh, bar. You have to have 70% uh, correct to pass. And there is also 14 day waiting period for uh, retesting. So if you fail, you need to wait two weeks in order to take the test again. But there is no limits for how many times you can test. What is on the test? Um, uh, you will have um, a lot of resources here when you can, uh, I linked to study, especially I recommend the study guide that was uh, compiled by the FAA. The, the study guide is, um, mm, it's a book. It's a book with the, uh, where there are covered all the topics 
that can be uh, that will be on the test. So if you read the book and of course understand what you're reading and have the uh, information that are in the book, you should have no problems with uh, with the exam and obtaining uh, the certificate and uh, the knowledge to obtain certificate. You have here also the checklist for um, obtaining the uh, remote pilot certificate if you are already a pilot or if you just want to operate the URES because there are different two uh, routes to get the certificate. The test, the remote uh, pilot test uh, test guide uh, gives you tips and tricks how to uh, how to uh, pass the test. And also there is a training course uh, here. You just have to log in and the FAA saf safety team uh, prepared a really extensive and nice uh, course that is uh, to, to help you uh, learn for the part 107. Um, there is also here the sample exam that you're gonna have the assignment from. So we can see you can see what uh, what are the questions, how it will look like, what you will you can expect when you go to the uh, when you will come to the um, exam facility to take the exam. It's always uh, a test A B C, and one uh, answer is correct. Here you see what are the test topics and what are uh, how much of what topic is um, is on the test. There is a lot about regulations. So what are we right now talking about in this um, in this lecture? There is um, there is also about uh, questions about the weather and the operations of the U.S. Although no one is going to test you actually in operation and we're going to um, take you to the field and uh, see if you can fly. But you didn't have to know and have that theoretical knowledge about the UAS operations. There are also uh, questions about the airspace requirements. Uh, it is about, um, uh, to read the airspace uh, uh, charts. You're going to uh, mention it later, a little bit later. Uh, and also in the weather, uh, there are questions how to read read the um, the weather communicate uh, communication that is for the um, for the pilots and we're going to cover it a little bit later how to decode uh, the weather from it uh, a little bit there is from la uh, loading and performance but there is this uh, gap here you never know what you're going to get um, and uh, the, there is a, there is a um, set of questions you can uh, if you will be retaking it uh, you can see that some of the questions will um, um, will repeat, and there is a, a tip uh, from people that took the test or that there is always one question about alcohol.